Hi boys and girls, I'm so happy to see you today. Today we are going to talk all about healthy coping skills. Coping skills are the things that we use to deal with big feelings. All the strategies that we use to help ourselves make good choices when we're feeling feelings like anger or frustration or sadness or even when we're really excited or just really, really happy. When you feel big feelings, sometimes you can get overwhelmed by the feelings and do things that make you feel even worse or that get you into trouble. But when you learn healthy coping skills, you can learn to do things that will make the situation better no matter what the feelings are. So today we're going to play a trivia game that will help you guys learn some healthy coping skills and I hope you really enjoy it. Every slide has an example on it. So there'll be a person in the example that's feeling some kind of big feeling and we're going to talk about whether or not they're making good choices. So read along with me boys and girls. Eva started to feel frustrated with her schoolwork, so she asked if she could get up and get a drink of water. Is that a healthy coping skill? Hmm. You know what? I think it is. I think getting a drink of water is a great way to refresh when you're feeling frustrated. Yep. Good job, Eva. Taking a break can really help. This can make you feel calm and ready to try your work again. And you know what? After a break, sometimes your brain is refreshed and you'll figure it out a lot more easily. Brendan was upset that his friends weren't playing by the rules, so he walked away to go choose another game to play. Go, Brandon. I know this is a healthy coping skill because when your friends aren't playing by the rules or a game isn't fun anymore, it's always a good choice to just go find something else to do. Usually, you'll find something more fun and have a better time doing something else. James was worried about his mom, but he kept his feelings to himself because he didn't want to get made fun of. Is this a healthy coping skill? You know what guys, I don't think bottling up your feelings really makes them go away or does anything to help. I'm going to say no on this one. And we were right. It can be scary to talk about your feelings, but if James had talked to an adult that he trusted, he might have felt a lot better. So you know what, when you're feeling big feelings like nervousness or fear or worry, remember that the adults that take care of you at home and your teachers and me, your counselor, we're always here to help you. and. We really like to listen and help you talk about your feelings. So if you ever need someone to talk to, remember that you can always get to me through Schoology or by asking your teacher, whoever takes care of you at home, to let me know that you need to talk. Namaya found out that his best friend was moving away. He wrote his feelings down in a journal. Is this a healthy coping skill? I think it is. Writing down your feelings in a journal can be a great way to work through them. So the next time you're feeling big feelings, Think about trying to write it down and see if that helps you feel better. Felicity was nervous about her big dance recital coming up, so she refused to go to the dance recital because she thought she would mess up. Is that a healthy coping skill? No way, guys. Not doing something because you're nervous about it doesn't make it any less scary, and you know what? You miss out on the fun of doing it. So the next time you're feeling nervous about something, don't refuse to do it. Try positive self-talk or imagining yourself doing well or talking to a grown-up about it. Those are all healthy coping skills, but avoiding it won't make it better. Jalen was mad that he wasn't allowed to go outside, so he yelled at his grandma. Is this a healthy coping skill? Guys, we all know yelling doesn't fix anything, so let's say no on this one. We were right. Jalen could have taken deep breaths, got a drink of cold water, or tried to find something fun to do inside if he wasn't allowed to go outside. But if you yell at someone like your grandma who's taking care of you at home, you're probably going to get in trouble for yelling and then you won't be able to do the thing you wanted to do and you'll be in trouble. Let's not yell. Gracie wanted to punch her brother, but instead she went into her room and punched a pillow. Go Gracie, good choice. I love this coping skill. Punching a pillow is a great way to deal with some anger or frustration. The next time you're feeling mad, try running up to your room and punching a pillow. See if it helps. I bet that you'll feel way better than if you accidentally punched one of your siblings. That doesn't feel good and it always gets you in trouble, so definitely avoid it. Olivia didn't want to take her test, so she hid it under her desk. Is this a healthy coping skill? Nope. Hiding a test under your desk doesn't make it go away, guys. It just gets you in trouble for not doing your work. Instead, try telling yourself that you can do it. Talking calmly to a teacher or taking some deep breaths. You can't avoid a test by hiding it under your desk, so don't do that one. 
Connor was mad at his friends, but he told himself he shouldn't do anything that he would regret. Go, Connor. That's definitely a healthy coping skill. Everybody gets mad at your friends sometimes. Nobody's perfect. Not even me. Not even you. So we have to remember that people make mistakes and sometimes we get angry and that's okay. But learning to handle anger calmly and to talk to people when we're feeling frustrated with them is really, really important. If you get mad at a friend, try to talk it out with them or take a little time away until you're calm enough to talk it out. And if you don't feel like you can talk it out by yourself, ask a grown up to help you. Lots of people are here to help you no matter what you need. And it's okay to know that you're not ready to talk about it with a friend by yourself. Lily found out that her grandpa was sick. She has to see the counselor so that she could talk about it. Go Lily. It can be scary to talk about big feelings, but you know what? It's always good to choose a trusted adult to talk about something with when you're feeling sad or nervous or worried. Lily choosing the counselor is a great, great idea. And I bet she'll feel more calm after she's had some talks. Armani got mad in basketball game and punched another player. You know what? I know that's not a healthy coping skill. When you're upset or angry, hurting someone or yourself is never okay. You're just going to end up getting yourself into more trouble. And somebody could really get actually hurt. So instead of punching another player, try walking away, talking to your coach, getting a drink of water, or just asking to sit out from the game for a few minutes. The truth is, you'll be better in the long run for taking a little time away from the situation and if you punch another player in a game situation, you probably won't be allowed to play anyway. Devin couldn't figure out how to do his science homework, so he crumpled up his paper and threw it away. Well, this is a lot like putting the test underneath the desk. Throwing a paper away won't make it go away. Next time you're frustrated with some homework, maybe take a little break, get a drink of water, ask for help, or take some deep breaths because throwing it away won't make it go away. It'll just mean that you didn't get your work done. So now you were frustrated in the first place trying to do the work and you're gonna be extra frustrated when you get in trouble for not getting your work done. Oops, I went backwards. There we go. Remind yourself that you are smart enough to do the work anytime you're feeling frustrated with homework and don't be afraid to ask someone for help. All right, guys, those are all of our examples for today. You guys did a great job. Thanks for following along with me. And I hope that you try some of these coping skills at home. Big feelings happen to everyone, but it's really important to learn how to handle them in a positive way. And I know you guys can do it. Have a great rest of your week. Try some of these coping skills if you feel some big feelings. And just get excited because in a few more weeks, we're going to talk about coping skills again. And we're going to talk all about how our pets can help us with coping skills. So start thinking of all the ways that either your pets or your stuffed animals at home can help you cope. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks with Mrs. Gray to talk about ways that we've learned to use coping skills with our pets at home. Talk to you soon, boys and girls. Bye.